Hi guys, thanks for this episode of the Nick Egan Times. In this episode, we have two awesome guests from the amazing group UB40, who I believe have been one of the most consistent groups of all time, with their, especially their longevity, hits and albums with no signs of slowing down. We have two of the members, Robin Campbell and Jimmy Brown, um, one of the most commercially international recognized groups of all time too, in the reggae genre especially. Um, UB40 has now released, recently, sorry, released a new album on 25th of June. Um, called Bigger Bay Rhythm. Uh, to give you some context of what UB40 has achieved, um, one of the most successful British brands of the last 40 years. Some of their achievements include four Grammy Award nominations for Best Reggae Album, have had two USA number one hits and another two in the top 10. UB40 has had more than three um, UK number ones and 50 singles in the top uh, 40 UK. UB40 has had over 100 million album sales currently worldwide and currently have released 23 albums. Some of the hits that you may know, know sorry, is Can't Help Falling In Love With You, Red Red Wine, Here I Am, Kingston Town, I Got You Babe, The Way You Do The Things You Do, and Here I Am. Um, here to promote their new album, Bigger Bag of Rhythm, is both of them. How are you guys? Good, thank you. Oh, that was an intro, wasn't it? <laughs> I didn't realise we'd done all that. <laughs> you guys have done incredible. Most of it. Um, how's it all been going over there? Crap. Well, you know, we've been locked down the same as the rest of the world, so it's yeah. uh, it's been extremely frustrating and getting more so as uh, as the dates just keep getting moved further and further back. You know, uh, we we're supposed to be coming out to Australia this year. Uh, that ain't going to happen. Obviously, that's not happening, and now all the dates have been moved to next year, uh, and that's probably the third time they've been moved. So, you know, that's pretty much the same in ev- every country that we were supposed to be in this year and last year, and um, it's extremely frustrating. Uh, we quite enjoyed it, I think, for the first couple of months when we were – it was like a forced holiday, you know, that we hadn't had for a long time because we're a hard-working band, you know. We tour a lot, and uh, – it was it was quite strange and, and even pleasant at first for the first few months, and now I think we're climbing the walls and just desperate to get back out on the road. Yeah, for sure. I was actually looking um, before you guys had two dates booked for twenty twenty two. In it was for May, I believe it's going to March. So yeah, it's yeah. crazy. And like the way it's obviously going down here, God knows what's going to happen there as well. I mean, basically, we're right enough for two years, aren't we? Everybody's just right enough two years, and you know whether we do whether we do the gigs at the end of the year, I, I, I think is highly doubtful. Um, and really, we're only hoping that next that next year is going to be the year that everything gets back to normal. But you know, we'll see. We had our first shows for uh, eighteen months this coming weekend in the UK, and uh, already one of those has been moved to September now because of uh, COVID restrictions. So. Uh, we still have one gig happening next week <laughs> at the moment, <laughs> as we speak. Uh, you know, even that could get cancelled at any moment. You just never know. Yeah, thank God we've got technology. So at least, you know, like we can stream your music, we can listen to you, and at least we've got that. All right, so, yeah, it's crazy too, I guess, on the plus side. At least we've got the technology to adapt to it as well. So, yeah, well, cool. podcasts are going crazy, aren't they? You know, right. and... Uh, and we've been doing um, live Zoom every week now for our fans, just where we just uh, play music and chat about the records and talk to them, have Q and A sessions, you know. And yes. it's been really been really popular, you know, just because it's a way of staying in touch. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. Um, all right, let's just jump straight into it. Um, it's been incredible, obviously, journey for you and you, forty, and both of you. Tell me about individually your both, your backgrounds, obviously how it started and, yeah, obviously what the journey's been like since to the point you are now, how it's transpired. Who's going first, Jim? Oh, well, I, I didn't really fully understand the question then, so I'll let you go first, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, our background is that we all grew up in inner city Birmingham in England. You know, we're all from the same area, roughly. Uh and when those that didn't grow up together kind of came together in their teens, you know. We've all known each other since we were kids. Uh, I've known Norman, our percussionist, since he was about six years old. Uh, obviously, I've known my brothers all my life. And uh, 
all the rest of the guys I've known since they were sort of 11 years old. So it's, uh, you know, it, we've been a gang of mates since we were kids, really. So uh, when we formed a band, we all had the same influences. We'd all been hanging around in the same streets, going to the same clubs, coffee bars, pubs, nightclubs, you know. And um, we never had a discussion about the kind of music we were going to play. It was always going to be a reggae band as far as we were concerned. Uh, and that was what we did. We just kind of took our social circle on the road. Uh, we were a gang of mates that became a band. And the guys that didn't join the band became our road crew. You know, it was... Uh, we literally took our social circle on the road with us and travelled the world for the last 40 years. That's amazing. It's incredible. Um, tell me about the new album. Talk to me about, obviously, um, I know obviously you've done the previous album that relates to it. What was the motivation behind it? Well, well we had, we'd already done, uh, back in, I think it was 1986, we'd done a, an album called Bag of Rhythm, which was our backing tracks on recent albums, um, being redone by local artists doing their, doing the songs over the top of our backing tracks. Uh, mostly DJs, toasters and, uh, and rappers from Birmingham. And, um, we always said we were going to do a follow up. And of course, since, since 1986, we've had quite an international, so quite a lot of international success. So we've got to know a lot of other artists around the world and, Bigger Bag of Rhythm, which is the follow-up now, 30-odd years later, um, is featuring a lot of international artists. Obviously, we, we're featuring uh, Ace of Shem from New Zealand and uh, people like um, uh, the Reggae Rogers from India, um, Inner Circle, who work out of Miami, other um, young Jamaican artists, older, older Jamaican artists as well. So it's quite an eclectic mix of tracks. Um, all based on tracks from our last album for the many and it was just one of those things we could do in lockdown you know you talk about lockdown and the technology and all that and we we had the technology to just send backing tracks around the world to different people and say do you want to do something on them and they uh, we, we everybody said yes everybody that we asked said yes and uh, this is the result now of, uh, of uh, our labours in the last couple of years that's astonishing that is truly astonishing. What inspires you, Blue 40 Daily? What inspires you both daily? Oh, always the same thing, isn't it? You know, you want to you want to make the perfect record, and uh, you get close, you know, but uh, you're always striving to to make that perfect record. So uh, we're still trying to, you know, and also we're we're the live band, and you want to do that perfect live show as well. So that's a, that to me. That's the main motivation, you know, to. To, to keep working just to just to make that perfect record yeah. yeah our life is very cyclical you know we uh we're either in the studio or we're on the road playing everybody what we've just done in the studio you know that's uh that's what happens we make a record we take it around the world we come home have a five minute break and make another record you know that's generally what we do and uh, have been doing for over 40 years now so uh it's 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 our life's blood. It's what we do. It's what we love doing. And we can't see it changing anytime soon, really. We're just going to keep doing it until we can't, I guess. <laughs> and there's loads of subject matter. You know, you know we're, we're, a, we're a political band for a start. We've always written about politics, and there's really no shortage of politics to write about. Not at the moment. So, you know, there's always subject matter. Um, and, and we love the music, you know, so we, it's that. Uh, a no-brainer. We're going to just carry on doing it until somebody tells us to stop. Yeah, yeah. we're no longer angry young men. We're angry old men. Old men, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's, um, going back, what's some of your favourite songs and albums that you've released, like that obviously that you that you most cherish? That, that you I, think, put out? I, I think your favourite album is generally the one you've just done uh, because you're most excited about that, you know. It's your latest thing, so you want everybody to hear it and it's the one that you're generally the most excited about at that time uh i guess when you go back and listen to albums as we've been doing on the zoom sessions um it, you you get new favorites you know every time we resurrect a song and put it back into the set it becomes a new favorite you know because you remind it just reminds you of how good the track was you know and you haven't done it for years so uh, we're constantly finding 
new favourites and old favourites, rediscovering them, you know. Uh, I don't have one favourite album. I have many, you know, out of the 20-odd albums we've done, the, I love all of them for different reasons. Well, maybe not all. There are a couple that, <laughs> you know, that I don't love. But, um, you know, for the most part, they've all got something about them that I love, you know. And um, the Labour of Love series was a, a great thing to do and always great fun because it's paying tribute to our idols, you know. We've always enjoyed doing that series. Um, working with the original artists and making the Father's album uh, was one of the highlights of my life. You know, working with people that, that I've adored all my life was just fantastic, you know. Um, and every now and again, you, you do an album that you know is better than anything you've done for a while. And I think uh, For The Many, our last album, was one of those albums, uh, which was why we wanted to use the rhythm tracks off that album to do a bag of rhythm, uh, you know, another bag of rhythm. And it became, obviously, because of its international flavour, bigger bag of rhythm. Amazing. Where has been, or what is, has, I guess, the best place you play that in your, that you can recall, what has been the best concert or the best place you travel to that really, that just sticks out for you? Oh, so lovely. Yeah, so this is good. You know, I mean, for a start, we we did Madison Square Garden sold out when we had a, a number one single and number one album. That's pretty cool. In uh, America, yeah, yeah. Quite a high New York. But then, of course, yeah, then, of course, we've got playing South Africa just after the dumping of the cultural boycott and having the biggest walk-up and having the, the big, biggest live events in uh, in South Africa. That was pretty cool as well. We still uh, hold the live record in South Africa for public attendance. We had 210,000 people over three shows, and it was uh, it was phenomenal. And, of course, we were going there after apartheid was over and Mandela was out of prison and been made president, and it was just a fantastic feeling. Uh, felt like we'd won something. <laughs> And it was just a fantastic uh, atmosphere, you know, to have 70,000 people singing your songs back at you, songs that were actually outlawed in previous years, you know, because of the apartheid system. Our, our music was outlawed in South Africa. So well, to, go, really popular. to go there and have them sing the songs to us, you know, it was just fantastic. But, you know, we, we've just had fantastic gigs the world over. I love playing uh, the Hawaiian Islands. I love playing any of the islands in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, yeah. You know, when, when we've gone to Tonga or Fiji or any of those islands, you know, it, it's always a wonderful reception. We're always treated like royalty. And they all seem to know every song and sing every song back to you, you know. It's just, uh, that's the great thing about being in a reggae band, I think. It doesn't matter where you go in the world. Uh, everybody knows your music, you know, and everybody's, every island seems to have adopted reggae as its as its own Indigenous music, you know. Yeah, for sure. I even know that too. When going into bars or pubs, right, like people know your music, they come on, like it's so popular. Like every single time, Red Red Wine, Kind of Falling in Love, you, <laughs> one of the great ones. They just come on and like they're the boys. How? What is that feeling like when they come on? If you go to a bar or a pub, how does that feel? Hearing your own <laughs> play. It's it, it's uh, you know it's the ultimate thing. It, that's why you make music is is because you want people to love it, you know. And uh, the fact that those songs are still being played in jukeboxes and still being covered by other artists in bars and things like that, you know, that just gives me a buzz every time I hear it, you know. Any time I hear a, a record of ours, even the ones I've heard a million times, you know, any time I hear something played on the radio that's ours, I still get a buzz out of it because, you know, that's... It's why we started in the first place. What's the best artist or artist that you collaborated with that really resonates with you, that you really enjoyed? Oh, God, a lot of them. All of them, really. Yeah. Everyone we yeah. work with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, we, we, we've never... I, I can't remember ever... We, you know, for instance, in Bag of Rhythm, we sent out two or three backing tracks to different artists and said, pick one, but they get picked two and three. Um, to do instead, and they were all great. So, you know, I mean, we're not just being diplomatic, you know. I mean, really, it's so nice to hear what other people, other artists do. 
to your music, you know, which it's a pleasure. So I couldn't say one collaboration was better than another, you know, because of the, the nature of collaborations. They're all different, you know. And all yeah, different. And, and you work with people, a, a band like Inner Circle, who have been going even longer than we have, you know. They've just celebrated 50 years as a band. Um, 50, I think they're on their 53rd year now. Um, and to have them work with you is, is, is brilliant. And to hear what they did over our rhythms is brilliant. But then it's just as good to hear what the kids are doing. You know, the new upcoming stars from Jamaica, like Black Hero and Leno Banton. I love their tunes on our album as well. You know, what, what they've done over the same rhythms. Is completely different to Inner Circle, has a completely different feel. It, it's sort of much more modern, you know. And uh, But I love them equally. All, every contribution on the album is a positive one, you know, and it adds to the album for me. And um, that's just, it's always been a joy to collaborate with people. Robert Palmer was a wonderful artist to work with. He was a, a, a very talented man uh, who, knew his stuff in the studio, you know. He was he was great to work with. I, I learned a bit off him as well, you know. Uh, Chrissy Hind, working with Chrissy Hind in the studio. She's a great singer, you know. Um, and to get to produce people like that is just fantastic, you know. Um, and, of course, all the, the reggae stars that we've worked with, uh, like John Holt and uh, Ken Booth and people like, you know, Freddie McGregor, Greg, Gregory yeah. Isaacs and Gregory Freddie McGregor. Isaacs, yeah. You know, they're, they're too, too genius good. artists, all of them. And, uh, yeah, I've, you know, I've, I've got nothing left in my, uh, what do they call this? The, the book. Yeah, your bucket list. <laughs> my bucket yeah. list is, is pretty, uh, you know, used up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's very insightful. What's, um, what's been the, I guess, the funniest stories from fans or the craziest stories that you've had over your years? Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, we can't usually can't tell them because they involve contraband of some description, <laughs> uh, um, uh, but you know, and customs. But uh, uh, um, I don't know. Off the top of my head, I can't think of one. Rob, help! <laughs> <laughs> I do remember playing a, a gig in Ireland once. It was uh, a big kind of arena type show, and um, I was standing singing. And I heard a, like a muffled scream and a guy landed in front of me who'd been standing on the roof of the venue and he came through the roof and he fell like the height of the, it must have been 50 feet. He fell all the way and landed a couple of feet in front of me on the monitor wedge. And uh, it, I heard him sort of groan and thought, God, he's broken his back or something. And he just got up and ran off the stage and was never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he, he, he could have been paralysed, the, the amount, the height that he fell, you know. And he was actually standing on the roof getting a free show and he just fell through the roof. So Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's shocking at the time because if he'd landed on me, I'd have been dead. <laughs> Well, there are, you know, there's all kinds of things that happened during uh, our gigs. We had an assassination once in uh, Northern Ireland uh, where one... Uh, an assassination uh, attempt. Attempt, yeah. Not yeah. an actual assassination. No, but he did actually get shot in the head even though he survived. So I don't yeah. know how, but he survived somehow. But, yeah, it's stuff like that. They, that does happen at gigs. I had a mate once who uh, dropped a tab of acid while I was playing. come to see the gig. And while I was playing... He's decided that he needed a phone number, so he came up on stage, tapped me on the shoulder while I'm playing the gig, <laughs> to ask me for a particular phone number. He got dragged back by the security. But, you know, these mad things happen because you're, you're on the road and, you know, you're out there and you can't control every, uh, every, uh, every last thing, you know what I mean, when playing live. So, you know, but we survive. We, we can cope with anything, to be honest. We've done that many shows. Amazing. What what is the best experience or lesson that you've learned being in you before in your time in you before? You? What like what has been the things that you have learned or the best thing you've learned? The best thing I've learned. Oh. Well, if you if you wanted if you wanted me to give some advice to a band, I'd say if you're gonna start a band and you you're really serious about it and it's a proper band where everybody contributes, then you need to share everything equally. 
with each other, and that will maybe cement some kind of longevity to the to the proceedings. Because you know, once you have different people getting paid different things, that causes all kinds of problems in bands. You know, so yeah, everybody should get paid the same. That's something absolutely, I'll do. absolutely. That's the golden rule, isn't it? And we decided that when we first formed the band. Mm-hmm. That whoever contributed, whatever they contributed, we were all going to share the proceeds equally as as composers and songwriters and performers. We were going to share everything equally, and uh, I think you know that that led to our longevity uh, because obviously people aren't getting upset over not someone earning more than them, um, and you know we. 30 years is pretty good without changing any personnel, you know. Uh, obviously, we've we've changed a few now over the last 12 years, 13 years, but the first 30, you know, we were uh, we were un- unbreakable. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's okay. amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Um, what does the future look like for you before you? Where where are you guys headed? What, what's that looking like? Well, we never know. It's um, it's just more of the same, you know. And we're we're always surprised that we're still here, you know. And that every time we go out on the road, the venues are full, you know. Uh, we're always surprised that people still come to see us. We're we're always waiting for the day when no one comes, you know. And that hasn't happened yet. So as long as uh, as as long as people still come out to see us, we're going to still be out on the road. As long as we're physically able, you know, we we will be doing what we do, uh, more of the same, you know, more recordings and more tours. Yeah. Even more now, now that since we've had the forced hiatus of COVID, you know, yeah. We, yeah. we even more want to get out on the road and, and, and buck till we drop, you know, tour till we can't anymore. Yeah, well, I personally can't wait to get you guys out here and see you and come, yeah, have a great time because you guys always just deliver. I saw a, I recall going to, um, I mean, it was Central Place of Newcastle and you did a concert there a few years back and yeah, that really resonated with me. So yeah, you guys just kill it every time. It's just so consistent and just so amazing every time you play, especially the old hits too. I love the old hits. So yeah, you're killing it. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, we get better at, we, we, we get better and better every time. And though it's like you get, when you're a musician, it's not like sport where you, you've got a peak when you're 25 or whatever. You, you can go on forever, you know, and, and get better and better, and I think next hopefully, time... Hopefully, hopefully mature like a good wine. Like a good wine, yeah. So next time we're in Australia, we'll, we'll be the best we've ever been, I would think. Yeah, for sure. You like red wine, red, red wine. <laughs> then you're killing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Robin and Jimmy, thanks for coming on the podcast. I do appreciate it. Um, you know, like your album, Bigger Bay Rhythm, I've heard it, I've listened to it. It's amazing, the songs, the collaborations. How you've um, integrated, obviously, everyone from around the world and all the artists. It's just amazing. And, yeah, I wish you nothing but the best in all the future that you're doing. Brilliant. Thank Thank you. you. Very nice. Thank you. Thanks, guys.